Welcome to Marvelous French, in-depth French lessons for students of all levels. Today is another lesson in our Closer Look series, where we look at native French materials for useful vocabulary and grammar notes. This time, we're going to look at a poem by Victor Hugo of The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Les Miserables fame. The poem has no official title, so it's often referred to by its opening lines. Demain, des l'aube. I'll start off with a reading of the poem, and then we'll take a look at its overall structure and meaning. Demain, dès l'aube, à l'heure où blanchit la campagne, je partirai. Vois-tu, je sais que tu m'attends. J'irai par la forêt, j'irai par la montagne. Je ne puis demeurer loin de toi plus longtemps. Je marcherai les yeux fixés sur mes pensées, sans rien voir au dehors, sans entendre aucun bruit. Seul, inconnu, le dos courbé, les mains croisées. Triste, et le jour pour moi sera comme la nuit. Je ne regarderai ni l'or du soir qui tombe, ni les voiles au loin descendant vers la fleur. Et quand j'arriverai, je mettrai sur ta tombe un bouquet de ouvert et de bruyère en fleurs. The poem was written in 1856 and is composed of three stanzas of four lines each, called quatrains. Notice that the poem utilizes rhyme with the scheme referred to as ABAB. The first and third lines rhyme with each other, as well as the second and fourth lines. In other words, every other line rhymes. So we have campagne and montagne, à temps and longtemps, penser and croiser, bruit and nuit, and then some repetition with tombe and tombe, though the meaning of the word differs in each case, as we'll see later. And finally, our fleur and fleur. The poem also uses alexandrins, or alexandra in French, meaning each line consists of 12 syllables. Take the first line, for example. Demain, dès l'aube, à l'heure où blanchit la campagne. Now that I've gotten my dramatic reading out of the way, and we've talked a bit about the poem's structure, Let's take a look at the poem line by line and break down what's happening. So again, our first line is Demain, dès l'aube, à l'heure où blanchit la campagne. Let's look at the key words in this line. Demain, tomorrow. Dé, as soon as. L'aube, dawn, feminine. L'heure, our, feminine, ou, which usually means where, but can also refer to time when acting as a relative pronoun between two clauses and, as is the case here, translates as when. Blanchir, to become white. La campagne, the countryside. So we can translate this line literally as, today, as soon as dawn arrives, at the hour when the countryside becomes white. Or, if we want to give it a more poetic feel, today, come dawn, when the countryside is bathed in light. So let's dig a little deeper into some of what's happening here. We said that the word OU usually means where. For example, whereas the subway would be OU est le métro. Notice how OU has an accent over the U. This is called an accent grave, or grave accent in English. It doesn't change the pronunciation of the word, but note that the word OU without the accent also exists. It sounds the same, but has a different meaning. OU with the accent means where, but OU without the accent means OR. For example, tu prends du thé ou du café, would translate as do you drink tea 
or coffee. We also mentioned that when u acts as a relative pronoun connecting two clauses, it can translate as when. For example, Le jour où je t'ai vu, tu portais une chemise rose. The day I saw you, you were wearing a pink shirt. Or literally, the day when I saw you. In this example, ou is linking two separate phrases or ideas. One, I saw you on a certain day. Two, you were wearing a pink shirt on that day. Both of these clauses refer to a certain day and can be combined into one sentence to avoid repetition. The day I saw you, you were wearing a pink shirt. In English, we can say the day that I saw you or just the day I saw you. But in French, when the two clauses are linked by a time-related idea, ou is used and carries the meaning of when in English. That being said, when usually translates as quand in French, whether it's used as a question, tu partiras quand, when are you leaving, or a statement, elle lisait quand tu as appelé, she was reading when you called. Compare, où with the accent grave usually means where, où est le métro, when acting as a relative pronoun concerning time, où again with the accent grave over the U, translates as when. Le jour où je t'ai vu, tu portais une chemise rose. Ou without the accent means or. Tu prends du thé ou du café? Quand is the principal way we say when. Tu partiras quand? Elle lisait quand tu as appelé. Next, let's talk a little bit about the verb blanchir which means to become white or pale, or to whiten. For example, Il blanchit en entendant son nom. He grows pale on hearing her name. Je vais me faire blanchir les dents. I'm going to get my teeth whitened. Blanchir is a regular IR verb, meaning the infinitive ends in IR and follows a set pattern when conjugated. To conjugate regular IR verbs in the present, you take off the IR and add the following endings. IS, IS, IT, ISSONS, ISSEZ, ISSENT. So if we conjugate blanchir in the present tense, we get Je blanchis, tu blanchis. Il, elle, on blanchit. Nous blanchissons. Vous blanchissez. Il, elle, blanchissent. Several regular IR verbs, such as blanchir, express some sort of change and often translate as to get or to become something. They're often based on adjectives. For example, blanchir comes from the adjective blanc, which means white. Here are other regular IR verbs that follow a similar pattern. Several verbs are related to colors. Noircir comes from the word noir, meaning black, and means to blacken, to darken, or to get dark. Rougir comes from rouge, meaning red, and means to redden, to turn red, or to blush. Jaunir comes from jaune, meaning yellow. Any guesses what it means? That's right, to yellow, to turn yellow. Then we have grandir, to grow up, which comes from grand, meaning big. Grossir, to gain weight, which comes from the adjective gros, fat. Maigrir, to lose weight, from maigre, skinny. Vieillir, to grow old, or to grow older, from vieille, the feminine form of the adjective old, and ralentir, to slow down, related to lent, which means slow. Here are a few example sentences using some of these regular IR verbs. Rougir. Les fraises ont rougi sa chemise. The strawberry stained his shirt red. Grandir. Les enfants grandissent si vite. 
Kids grow up so fast. Maigrir. Elle a beaucoup maigri. J'espère que tout va bien. She's lost a lot of weight. I hope everything's okay. Ralentir. La voiture ralentit devant la maison. The car slows down in front of the house. Note that there are also several regular IR verbs that are not based on adjectives and do not translate as to get or to become something, such as finir, to finish, choisir, to choose, and obéir, to obey. And that concludes today's lesson. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until then, à la prochaine. See you next time.